Welcome to Ms. Zhuang's open house for the year of 2020-2021. Um, here is the syllabus for 11th grade students, just in case there are new students. Um, my email is dzhuang at mylusd.org. Uh, remind code is here. If you want to take a look, if you have not joined, please join Remind. Um, here is the syllabus. If you take your phone and scan this QR code, you will see all the 11th grade Common Core standards. Here is the syllabus for ERW students, my seniors. Uh, same information except for a different remind code. Uh, grading is a bit different. Uh, for, for seniors, summative is 55%, formative work is 40%, and homework is 5%. Um, but we have the same policy on late and makeup work technology, academic dishonesty, and other policies. If you take your phone and scan this QR code, it will take you to 12th grade Common Core Standards. Okay, next, what is ERWC? ERWC is Expository Reading and Writing Curriculum. Um, the senior class is called ERWC, so 100% of all the assignments are from the ERWC curriculum. For juniors, um, there are new curriculum for juniors that has been developed by the Cal States. Um, so I really like the Cal State standards um, just because it's more college level and that aligns with the teaching that I am doing with my students. Um, so 75% of the work for juniors, for my juniors, are taken from ERWC, and the rest are from other platforms. Okay, so here are the key principles of ERWC. Uh, one, integration of interactive reading and writing processes. Uh, two, a rhetorical approach to text that fosters critical thinking and engagement. Three, materials and themes that engage student interests. Four, classroom activities designed to model and foster successful practices of fluent readers and writers. Five, research-based methodologies with a consistent relationship between theory and practice. Six, built-in flexibility to allow teachers to respond to various students' needs and instructional contexts. And seven, alignment with the California Common Core State Standards for English Language Arts and Literacy. Um, examples of ERWs for 11th graders. Uh, so at the very beginning of the year, we did a portfolio uh, called Portfolio Metacognition. Um, so it's teaching students how to keep a portfolio of all their work. And metacognition means uh, being aware of what you're learning. Um, uh, number two, uh, we study rhetoric, which includes ethos, pathos, and logos. Three, um, we are reading a book called The Great Gatsby. Mm, four, we will be exploring some foundational document, um, The Big Breakup Declaration of Independence. Number five, some issues, number five to eight, some issues that we're gonna be studying um, include civil disobedience, daily challenge, mental illness in our lives, human impact on climate, Racing America. Another book that we might read if we have time is The Things They Carry and The Power of Story. And the last issue, which all students should learn before they leave high school, is What's Next? Thinking about life after high school. Um, examples of ERWC for 12th grade. Um, the first two modules are similar, portfolio uh, and metacognition. Uh, two, issue, rhetoric, including ethos, pathos, and logos. Uh, three, book, 1984. Another book that we might read if we have time is Brave New World. And the issues that we might be studying uh, are fake news and bias in reporting, juvenile justice, language, gender, and culture, value of life, waste more, once more. And the last issue, what's next? Thinking about life after high school. Um, other digital platforms that I use in addition to ERW curriculum is News ELA uh, and Common Lit. These two platforms have readings that could adjust to the student's um, reading level. 
Um, so if it's too difficult, the student can choose um, a, a Lexile level that, that's fitting for that student. And this is really good for um, students who don't um, speak English because it could translate to Spanish. And within this platform, as the students are reading, there are other tools in there that allow them to annotate, answer questions, um, have the both platforms have uh, writing assignments embedded. And there are little quizzes that that test the students understanding of the of the readings. Uh, besides these two reading platforms, I like to use Canva when students are doing projects. Canva is a great tool for students to use. Cami is a tool that we use to annotate a lot of our readings. Um, students also use G Suite, including Google Doc, which is very popular. We use that almost every day. Uh, Google Sheets, we use Google Slide, we use Google Site, um, Google Gmail, Calendar. Uh, Illuminate Education is used specifically for 9, 10, and 11th graders for their benchmark tests. Um, and then StudySync is the last platform uh, that I like to use. It has a lot of reading materials um, and assignments for my juniors. Okay, so in my class, I have an ed tech twist, meaning everything that students do is leverage with technology. So um, let's, let's look at what ed tech means. It's a combination of education and technology. It refers to hardware and software designed to enhance teacher-led learning in classrooms and improve students' education outcomes. Ed tech is still in early stages of its development, but it shows promise as a method of customizing a curriculum for a student's ability level by introducing and reinforcing new content at a pace the student can handle. What that means is, in 2021, students, I believe that technology is very important and students need to know how to use um, digital tools, learning tools, um, so that when they're in college or when they're out in the world working, they are prepared. So what my students are doing now is creating videos, creating slideshows, creating projects on Canva, um and um creating their own website learning how to um create qr codes um so that you know all these skills are very important for them to be prepared for the 21st century um let's look at some examples of the ed tech projects students have been doing um so ever since we pivoted our education online. This has been like a perfect transition. Um, before my students would keep a portfolio of all their work in a binder. Um, so now with this digital pivot, we have created an e-portfolio of all their work, their best work, organized um, and uh, on the web so that there's, they have access to it all the time. Um, so these are some examples. So you can take your phone and scan the QR code and it will take you to their websites. Um, so if you don't wanna use your uh, phone, let's take a look at some examples. Let's take a look at Jonathan's website. So Jonathan's my senior. In his homepage, he has um, information about who he is. This is his Canva page about him. And he created a video last semester reflecting on what he has learned. Um, in here, this is all the work that he has completed and organized um, in this portfolio called portfolio in this module called portfolio metacognition. So in here, he has uploaded um, all of his activities. Okay. So this will never get lost. It will be on the web until he deletes it. Um, but it's, what's very unique is that Jonathan has his own website. Um, how does this translate to the real world? 
um, when he has a company that he's pursuing, he can create a website for himself. Or if he wants to um, help another company create their own website, he would be able to do it. Okay, and then the next module is Ethos, Pathos, and Logos. We have 12 activities in here, and he has uploaded them all. Um, and then here is their 1984 activities. So we've done most of our work in Google uh, Doc, and uh, he has organized them by activities. Okay. And then lastly is his book report for quarter three. Um, just this quarter, I have encouraged students to uh, read a book on their own of their choice, and um, they can choose whatever book report they like, and then they will upload this onto their website. And then in quarter four, we'll have another book report. And then for uh, students' finals, it's very important with the metacognition portion that they reflect um, on what they learn. So last quarter, students... Um, uploaded what they learn on the home page. Um, this quarter, they're going to move it to this tab for um, quarter two and quarter three. And then we'll have another one for quarter four. OK, so that's one example. Um, let's see. Let's look at Adrian's. He's a junior. He has organized all of his work in here. He has portfolio metacognition. Um, Ethos, Pathos, and Logos, and The Great Gatsby. He's a junior, so he's doing The Great Gatsby. All his activities are here. Take a look at this. His activities one is here. Um, the Great Gatsby, all the activities that's been completed in Google Doc, he has uploaded in an organized way. And then his book report is right here. Um, he rewrote the ending of To Kill a Mockingbird. So all his work are organized um, online, and that's the e-portfolio that we are doing. Um, so if you're interested, you can take your phone and scan the other students' work and assignment, and it'll take you to their personal website. Okay. Um, virtual classroom guidelines in class. Um, please remind students to find a quiet place where they can concentrate. Make sure they're dressed appropriately when signing on. Uh, when entering the meeting, mute yourself. Uh, when you have a question, type in the uh, text box or raise your hand. If you have something to add to what is being said and it's not your turn, use the chat and the raise hand lecture feature. Wait for the teacher to call on you to unmute yourself. Only one student should talk at a time. Stay on topic when chatting and always use school appropriate languages as if we're in a regular classroom. Um, my, my students usually don't have a problem with this. They are very respectful, so I've never had an issue. Uh, for the online meeting component, we use Google Meet. So Google Meet um, is linked in the Google Classroom. There's a little link, and students just click on it and gets onto Google Meet. Um, in the Google Classroom, usually I'll tell students all their work that's due, like right here. Um, it's very convenient. It's very easy to use. Uh, Remind codes. Um, I contact with my students through Remind. Um, they text. They feel really comfortable texting me, and I respond usually right away. So period one, two, three, four, and six. This is the Remind code. If you haven't signed in uh, or joined the Remind uh, code class, please join. Please join us with these codes. Um, these are my students from period one. Um, they learned how to create a Bitmoji, and now their Bitmoji is everywhere, including their website. Um, period two. Um, these are my kids from period two. These are my kids from period three. These are my kids from period four. And these are the kids from period six. Um, yeah. So that is all I want to um, show you for my class. If you have any questions, please uh, reach out to me at my email, dduong at mylusd.org, or you can reach out to me um, on my Remind code. Thank you for coming, and I hope to see you around. Have a nice day.